Today we find ourselves in 1952. This is the power supply for a Motorola transceiver. This section is a dynamotor for the transmit side. This section is a low voltage for the receiver. In this video, we're going to focus in on the dynamotor. The nameplate identifies this as a Carter Super Dynamotor designed for intermittent duty. It has a 5.8 volt, 75 amp input that works out to about 435 watts. The output is 620 volts at 380 milliamps, which is 229 watts out. If you do the calculations between input and output, you'll find that this device is about 53% efficient. On the input, we find a heavy solenoid, which would have handled that 75 amp current. We can open the enclosure to expose the brushes. Let's go ahead and remove one of those brushes. We can see that they are quite large. We can do the same on the output section. And let's take this brush out. Oh dear, it cracked. Well, we'll try the other side. Mm, that one cracked too. That's unfortunate, but we should be able to get it out with a plier. And now we can compare the size of the brushes. So that's the input, and then this is the output brush. So that's 75 amps in on this, and 380 milliamps out on this. This is the commutator on the input side. We can make out the brush right here. And be sure to compare the segment width to the screwdriver. We've flipped the unit around. We're now looking at the output side. You can see the brush is buried deep in there. Here is the output going to this post here. The other side is to this post. And you'll notice compared to the screwdriver that the commutator segments are considerably narrower. Underneath the unit, we can see that it was manufactured October 9th in 1952. It's a shame those brush carriers broke. However, this device has seen better days. You can see here there's some corrosion on the low voltage side. I believe the mice have gotten in here and done some damage. As we close this video, we should take a quick look at the vacuum tubes that were associated with that transmitter. A period correct tube could have been the type 807. This was an older tube. It was developed sometime before World War II. 1952 was a notable year because that's the year that the 6146 was released. We can see that it's smaller when compared to the 807, yet it was much more capable. A pair of these tubes could deliver 100 watts, making it perfect for that 600 volt dynamotor. 